fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's danger on the trail ahead. Well, Silver. Follow. A volley of shots rang out from the other side of the ridge. The Lone Ranger and Tonto urged their mounts up the slope, and when they reached the summit, they could see two cowboys in the trail below. To the west, a band of horsemen were riding away, a great cloud of yellow dust drifting back from the thundering hoofs of their broncos. Hello, that's Pete Lacey and Pedro Martinez down there. Ah. What are they up to? Them fire in there. Well, those men seem to be riding for their lives. If not, hold up. Pete and Pedro not crook. I know, Kimosabe. Neither of those men. Come on, Silver, get him up. Strong. Well, what happened? Oh, he's nodding. <laughs> it's just a little joke we played. Well, those men who rode away didn't seem to think so. No, that is why it is funny. <laughs> you better explain, Pedro. Si, senor. We meet this ranchero outside of Osage. They have just sold their cattle and have much money. They are glad to have two more men to ride with him. <laughs> Not for long, they weren't. No. Pete wink at me and then we start to talk. It is a trick we have played before. Come on, Pete, we show him, huh? You started. See, si. You understand, senor? We are riding along with this ranchero. Then I say, this country remind me of the Sierras. <laughs> and I say, don't mention them Sierras. Why not? His place where we make much money. Yeah, and trappers up there were mighty careless about their money. Only reason I don't like to talk about the Sierras is, well, it reminds me of that sheriff I shot. Oh, you're not sorry for that. He tried to interfere with our business. I'm only sorry we didn't get his whole posse. Ah, uh, see, that was too bad. I think maybe I get five or six, though. Uh, that's bad shooting for you and me, Pedro. Mm. You got to admit it. Uh, we speak of money, senor. How much do we have? Not much. It's time we collect some more, no? That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and so we talk, senor. <laughs> the ranchero get nervous. <laughs> Pete and myself, we laugh inside. Then when we stop for a minute to water the horses at the spring, just, yeah? just Pedro and me. <laughs> they run, Shadow, they ride away so fast as they can. We laugh and we shoot our gun in the air. <laughs> it is funny. Yes, those ranchers will report this to the sheriff in Central City. When you ride in there, he'll arrest you. No, mister, we know the sheriff. He'll put the ranchers straight. You see, we never try that little trick any place where we aren't acquainted with the law. It's a good thing. Are, uh, are you really broke? Oh, si, senor. Flat like uh, the pancake. How long has it been since you did any work? Oh, not long. No, no. 
Only since yesterday. And uh, why are you broke? Mm. Uh, maybe the day before yesterday. How long has it been since you've had a steady job? We, we've been doing a lot of traveling. Yes, you always do. How long? Well, uh, well, it's close to two months. And it's time you took another job. And I know just where you can find one. I've been sort of ailing lately. Now, uh, don't collapse until you hear what it is. <laughs> no, you cannot fool a man. man. Uh, what is this job? Well, Bill Harriman has been given the contract to carry the mail between Central City and Morganville. It's a good contract. And he must get his stage line in operation before July the 1st. If he doesn't, he pays the government $500 a day penalty. July the 1st? That's close to two months. We have plenty of time. No, he hasn't. You see, he has to keep to a regular schedule after that. Means building way stations. Means buying plenty of horses and at least half a dozen coaches. Well, can he get them on short notice? And they're being shipped to Dodge City by rail. That's where you'll have to pick them up. Oh, that is the job. And that's part of it. You'll have to buy nearly 100 horses as well. You'll have to hire men to drive the coaches from Dodge City here. Wow, some trail. For the most part, there isn't any trail. But uh, that isn't the worst part of the job. What do you mean? Harriman has enemies. If they can delay him long enough, well, they can break him. I savvy. But this sounds like a job for you, mask man. Toto and I will be traveling with you. You see, there are a lot of places where I can't be seen wearing a mask. You'll have to handle the buying of the horses and the hiring of the men. We'll help you get them back here in time. It will be a great honor to work with you, senor. That goes for me, too. Good. Then report to Harriman in town. Here, give him this and he'll know I sent you. A silver bullet. You'll be given all the money you need. We'll meet you on Windy Ridge at dawn. Kino, we will be there. Come on, Silver. Get him up. With the silver bullet as a recommendation, Pete and Pedro were hired to buy Harriman's horses and bring his coaches west from Dodge City. They met the Lone Ranger and Tonto the following morning at dawn, and together the four men hit the trail. They rode all morning. At noon, they stopped for a few minutes to rest and water their horses. Then when they were in the saddles once more... There's uh, something I've been meaning to ask you, Pete. What's that? Did you happen to meet a tall, dark man named Cavell in town? Uh, not that I know of. Just what did you do? We went straight to Harriman's office. He hired us, and afterwards he took us over to the bank to get the money. Well, then what? We took a room at the hotel and turned in early, right after supper. Pete, that fellow who sit across the table from us, maybe his name was Cavell. Oh, yeah. Maybe so. Uh, was he tall and dark? Who's he? Did you tell him what you were going to do? Well, he offered us a job. I told him we couldn't take it. You say, no, thank you. We worked for Mr. Harriman. That's right, I did. But I didn't say what we were going to do. You tell him it was not to be in town. That would have been enough for him. He knows what Harriman has to do. Who is this Cavell? Well, he wanted the stage line franchise himself. He'll try to stop Harriman from getting into operation on time. He will not stop us. He'll try. How and I saw a band of horsemen heading east last night. It's too dark to make out their faces, but Cavell may have been their leader. What do you figure? We're going to run into an ambush? They won't try that until everything else fails. They were leading extra horses. That means they intended to travel a long way and travel fast. Yeah. It's a long way to the Malcolm Ranch. Senor, that is where we buy the horses we need. Yes, it's the only place we can be sure of getting enough. We're broken to harness. Mm, see, si. they tried to get there before us. They may succeed. Your Mustangs have a lot of endurance, but they aren't so fast. Why don't you and Tonto ride on ahead? I, I think we'd better stay together. But what if Cavell does get to the Malcolm Ranch first? We may find that all Malcolm's horses have been sold. Well, then what? We'll have to go on to the crossbar. Well, that isn't on the trail of Dodge City. I know. It'll take us out of our way. Well, let's hope we don't have to go there. Come on, Silver. Get, get out. Get out. They reached the Malcolm spread four days later. As they rode toward the ranch house, they could see a girl standing on the wide porch. Suddenly, the rays of the setting sun flashed from the barrel of a leveled rifle. Steady, Silver. Who's coming? Steady, Silver. Steady, Silver. That's Jed Malcolm's daughter, Nancy. She doesn't know me, and for my mask, she must think I'm an outlaw. You two will have to ride on and explain. Kino, get up there. Get up. Oh, 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 boy. Oh. Oh. She just won't have any truck with any of us. Senorita, we are friends. This is the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Your father knows me. Ask him to come out. My father can. Oh, please, help us. Now she's asking for help. Come on, Silver. Get, get up, up there. there. I thought you belonged in a game you came this morning. I thought you'd come back. 
Oh, Eddie Silvers. Eddie Moore. Oh, oh, what was that? What did you say about a gang? Oh, they came this morning. They shot my father and they drove off all our horses. You can see for yourself the corral is empty. You don't mean that your father's dead. Nobody's badly wounded. Tonto. Ah. Me go look at them. If anyone can help, Jed, Tonto's the one. Now, what about the horses? Well, they're gone, that's all. They drove them off toward the hills. It won't be hard to pick up the trail, boys. Let's get started before dark. Lead the way, senor. We're with you. Come on, sir. Get up there. Get up. The trail led into the foothills. The moon rose full and bright, and they were able to follow it at top speed. But at last, the ground became hard and rocky. The hoof prints disappeared. At last, they reached the opening of a canyon. The Lone Ranger raised his arm in a signal to stop. Oh, Eddie, oh, Eddie. Oh. Well, if Tonto were with us, he might be able to find a sign to follow. There's nothing I can see. Yeah, the ground is too hard. Well, why not take a chance? There's only two ways they could have gone. Straight on or into the canyon. <laughs> What's the matter, Silver? I never saw him act up before. He wants to go into the canyon. He sure looks like it. Yeah, I'll give him his head. All right, boy. Get up there. Come on. If the gang is in here, they may be waiting for us. Keep your guns ready. Come on, Silver. There was no sign of the gang in the canyon. And before long, it opened up into a wide valley. Lone Ranger and his companions could see nearly a hundred horses below them. And near a small campfire, the figures of three or four men. There aren't too many for us to handle. Let's go. But before they were in range, the men around the campfire saw them racing across the level ground. The outlaws leaped to their saddles. The sound of shots and yells drifted across the valley. A moment later, the herd of horses began to move, slowly at first, then faster and faster, straight toward the opening of the canyon. Stampeded them. We are right in their way. See, and there is no way to get out of it. We'll have to run before them. Back through the canyon, Silver. Pick up your feet, boy. <laughs> if that herd catches us, we'll both go under. Come on, Silver. Easy, easy, boy, easy. Huh? How about it? It's all right now. Broncos are through the canyon and they're slowing down. All we have to do is drive them back to the ranch. What about the outlaws? We won't find them there if we do go back. There was another way out of the valley at the far end. See, we are the horses. That is what we have come for. But there was only three or four men around that campfire. I thought Cavell had a big gang. He has. The others are somewhere near. We can't leave here until we're sure that the mountains are safe. Listen, shots from the ranch. The gunfight. Count up the horses. Get them moving. Why waste time with them? We may need them. All right, boy. Look out window over there. Find out if they're all around house. All right, Tonto. Keep down low. I will. What you see? Nothing. They're all on that side. <laughs> Tonto, are you all right? Be all right. Oh, you're not. You've been hit. It only scratch. You keep down. Uh, I'm not trying to get closer for a while. Oh, why have they come back? They got all our horses. Them at the feet, Pedro. Maybe them think them inside here. Maybe better time to go out there, huh? What? That's right. Me stay here, you in danger. Better time to surrender. I won't let you. You in danger. But so is my father. You've helped him already. I know you can pull him through if you stay here. If you give yourself up, those men will kill you. It's not right, me stay oh, here. Oh, if you won't do it for your own sake, think of Paul. Him get better now. Him not need Tonto. Me go. No, please. You keep back. I won't. We can hold him off. I'll be safe. You let me I go. I won't let you open that door. Tonto, use winter then. Listen. What's that? It's our horses. And look beyond them. Look who's driving them back. It's the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, Pete and Pedro, drove the horses on toward the ranch. The outlaws were forced to desert their position near the corral as they heard thunder toward them. The masked man and the two cowboys took advantage of this to ride straight to the ranch house. Go on, boy. Run the other side of the house. Now inside. Look, by the corral. The horses are crowding right into us. Are you all right, Tonto? Huh? He was going to give himself up to keep me out of danger. Them not want to hurt girl. We can't be sure of that. Yes, sir. Every last one of those horses are in the corral. I thought that's where they'd go. It's home to them. They feel safe there. But the gang, will they not try to drive them off again? We can keep them away from the corral. We'll keep them away from the house, too. Every man to a window. Now, hold and fire. so many, I'd like to go after them. We'll see them again, Pete. They're heading east. As soon as you finish your business here, we'll be heading in the same direction. Dodge City or bust. By the following morning, Jed Malcolm was well enough to be left in Nancy's care. Pete and Pedro bought all the horses they needed. And with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, started driving them toward Dodge City. It was another ten days before they arrived there and made their camp outside of town. The Lone Ranger and Tonto stayed with the herd while the two cowboys went in to inquire about the stagecoaches. At dusk, they returned. Oh, 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 oh. Are oh. yeah, the coaches there? Yep, they're ready and waiting for us. That's good news. Oh, but there, there is bad news, senor. Uh, what do you mean? Cavelli's ready and waiting, too. I sure wish we could turn him over to the sheriff. There's no chance of that. He and his men all wore bandanas over their faces when they raided the Malcolm Ranch. We can't identify them. Mm, he will make it hard for us to hire the men we need. He's been talking? See, si. He's warned most of the cowboys against us. Well, uh, what could he say? That Harriman's going broke. He'll get stuck in Central City and never get paid. Oh, I see. But we, we have one chance. Trail herd coming from Texas today. Now, we know most of the men on that crew. And as soon as they get paid off, we'll try to hire them. It's better if we get back to town pronto. All right, go ahead. But uh, just remember one thing. Yeah. Well, what is that? Don't get in a fight. Cavell has a lot of men around, and he may try to start one. Oh, we will remember. That uh, goes for you too, Pete. Uh, Kino, we'll be back before midnight. Kino, Kino. You must have it. I'll have to be disguised. You go into town? Yes. Pete can be trusted. But can be plenty bad. And if he goes for his gun... He won't have a chance. Well, Tex, what's the answer? You sure it means a steady job after we get to Central City? Absolutely. Then you can count me in. How about the rest of you? That's fine. Well, have a good time tonight and come out to the camp tomorrow morning. We'll drive some horses into town, get them hitched to the coaches, and hit the trail. Uh, boys, I think twice before I said yes. Hey, this Cavell. Remember, Peach, no fight. We've got our answer already, mister. You don't know what you're getting into, Tex. Harriman's broke. He'll never be able to get his line going. And... I've warned him to hear that kind of talk from you. It's the truth. What's more, you'll never get to Central City alive if you hit the trail with these two hombres. You're talking about friends of ours. Friends? <laughs> How long has this been since you've known him? Well, maybe two or three years, but that don't make any difference. It sure it does. They turned into the worst sidewinders in the West. Pete's got a reputation for shooting men in the back. Oh. <laughs> As for the little half-breed... Uh, what is that you call me? You heard me. Oh, careful, Pedro. I am Pedro Martinez de Sofa de Riniega. Is the blood of the conquistadores that run in my veins. You're a no-good horse-stealing coyote. No, oh, never, never will I stand for such an insult. You will apologize, senor, or go for your gun. So you think you can outdraw me? Go for eh? your gun. That suits me. Hey, what the... Hey, you haven't been hurt. Only shot the gun out of your hand. That boy's feet. Quiet, quiet. This man had his gun already drawn. He was ready to shoot as soon as you made a move. So, you do not take any chances, senor Cavell. Nobody can prove he meant to shoot. Come on, Joe, let's get out of here. Oh, you, you saved my life, senor. Have you finished with your business? See, si. these men work for us. You better get back to camp and take them with you. How about it, boys? 
Will you leave with us now? It sounds like the healthy thing to do, Pete. I'll see you later. You do not come with us, senor? Uh, not yet. I'm going to find a half a dozen more men. What's that? I'll uh, see you later. He was only here, Tonner. We could go after those coaches right away. Now why him stay in town? He said he's going to find a half a dozen more men. Why him do that? They're plenty here. All I know is what he said. Uh, there is somebody right this way now. Uh, more than one horse. That's right. They're Lone Ranger. I have six men right with them. Ready with your guns, Pedro. See. Si. Here's some more men for our crew. We've got them covered, mister. Oh, you have made the big mistake. I don't think so, Pedro. You have. We've seen these men talking to Cavell in town. They're members of his gang. Well, they're traveling with us. Well, they can't. You've got to believe us. They're crooks. I asked them to come along with us, and uh, they said yes. Sure they did. I'll bet they jumped at the chance. If they come with us, so there'll be that many less with Cavell. Huh? And how can they make any trouble if we make them our prisoners? Prisoners? What's the idea? It's a double crook. Up with your hands. Get them off their horses and tie them up. Oh, yes. oh, they'll be our first passengers, non-stop to Central City. <laughs> caravan of coaches headed west early the next morning. In each of them rode one of Cavell's men, a prisoner. But the Lone Ranger knew that more trouble could be expected. Rough trails, dangerous country, and many rivers lay ahead. They traveled on and on, day after day, for one week, two weeks, nearly three. There was no sign of Cavell. But the Lone Ranger and Tonto scouted the country to the north and the south, and finally, as the drivers were making camp at the banks of the last river before Central City, they rode in with news. Steady, Silver, steady, boy. All right, just in time for grub, Mask Man. Yeah, we found something. Cavell? It looks like it. A band of horsemen forded the river about a mile to the north. When? Maybe today. Early this morning, he means. Well, they circled our camp last night. That's right. Now they're camped in the valley at the opening of the pass. We can see the smoke of their campfire. We'll have to go through there tomorrow. They'll be waiting for us then. We're going to attack their camp tonight. Huh? Take them by surprise. Pedro! Si, senor. Bring the boys over. Oh, we'll stay here until midnight, Pete. Then we cross the river with the coaches. It'll take us three or four hours to reach the valley. We strike at dawn. Sorry, Cavell. I guess I must have dozed off. You don't have to guess. Fine guy. Yeah, what's the difference? We won't have to worry about anything until daylight. Say that now. Agree in the east already. Yeah, sure. It's been a black night. I thought I heard something out there. What do you mean? Horses. And then something that sounded like a wagon or a stagecoach. Yeah, you were just dreaming about them. We can't let them get through. We won't, boss. We'll wipe out all the drivers first and then burn up the coaches. Look. Where? Right out there. I wasn't dreaming. That's what I'm now. You're loco. Use your eyes. It's still pretty dark. They're all around us. Men, roll out of your blankets. I'll be dark. You're right. No horses or anything. Just the coaches. Well, it's the teams. I don't see any men. We're inside. All the cover they need. And we're in the open. Surround it, too. Hurry up, boys. Get those coaches full of lead. Look for our party. We haven't got a chance, boss. Look at that. But they can pick us off one by one, and we can't even see them. Keep fighting. No, not me. If we give up, we'll only go to jail. If we fight it out, we die. You're a pack of yellow coyotes. No, I want to live. Don't shoot anymore. We give up. following night in Central City, Bill Harriman paced the floor of his living room. His wife laid her sewing on the table and turned to him. Won't you try and stop, Bill? Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't do any good to worry. I know that. I just can't help it. The Lone Ranger will get the horses and the coaches here if it's humanly possible. Oh, but the time's up. Oh, tomorrow I start paying the government $500 a day. How long do you suppose I can keep that up? You can give up the franchise. Then you won't have to pay anything. Oh, yes, I will. I'm liable for every penny I have. 
every penny. Eh, it means I'll go broke. All that I have, all that we've worked so hard for, swept away. We'll still have each other. Oh, no, but Mary, I... I don't mind starting over. Well, it's too late for that. We're getting old. Here. Won't you sit down? Let me make you a cup of tea. Tea? The Lone Ranger won't fail us. He promised. Well, for the first time, he'll break a promise. Don't be too sure. Well, he isn't here, is he? Well, I'm not even sure about that. Someone just rode up and something tells me that... <gasps> Quickly, Bill, let him in. I wish you wouldn't build up your hopes. I know. I'm sure. Good evening. It is. It's the Lone Ranger and Tonto. I... But they're alone. You weren't able Step to... out here on the porch, Bill. Ah, look down the street. Here come Pete and Pedro with your coaches and your drivers and all the extra horses you need. Hey, hello, Bill. we got plenty of horses now. Mercy, look at them. One, two, three, four. You got all of them through. Well, why don't they stop? Well, stop and left, man. Tell the boys to come in. we got to celebrate. They can't stop yet, Mrs. Harriman. They're heading for the sheriff's office. For the sheriff's office? Cavell and his gang are inside the coaches. All of your first passengers are going to jail. You had a fight with them? You captured them? It wasn't much of a fight. They won't make any more trouble. Thank goodness. Mask man, you fixed everything up. The first stage leaves from Morganville in the morning. Well, that's all that matters. Adios. Oh, but wait. Oh, don't, Mary. Well, I want to thank you. Oh, I know you do, but you've forgotten. Come on, Silver Hill. I've forgotten what? The Lone Ranger never breaks a promise. And when his work is done, he never waits for thanks. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 